Hey folks, in today's video, it's about automation in Bitwig Studio. And I don't want to explain how the automation works. There are a lot of tutorials on YouTube that actually explain how the automation works in every DAW possible. But what I want to talk about in this video is about how you can use automation to your advantage, how you can use it to actually progress your track, how to use it as an arrangement tool and why it's actually the most important thing you have in your tool belt for arrangements. So uh, a lot of people use automation also as a sound design tool to draw in um, different value changes over time. And this is completely fine. But the main purpose of automation, in my opinion, is for progressing a track to paint in a storyline to your arrangement. Um, and I want to give you an example of what I mean. So here I have basically just a kick drum. Maybe just remove this. Just a kick drum I recorded here with my DFAM. Um, just to have some kind of, you know, rhythmic element in the track. I'm using my auto level just to get a nice peak at 0 dB here with this kick drum. Uh, maybe I can move this here a bit forward. Something like this, maybe I also draw in here a different um, envelope. Not this is okay for now. So okay, we have this kick drum as a rhythmic element. So let's imagine we insert here some kind of chord or chord progression, not really chord progression. Just use here um, a simple chord. So maybe make some dub techno. So we have the root note here, we have the third, we have the fifth. And we draw in some notes, or actually we draw in here just one note. Um, let's go here for C. That's too low. Or maybe it's okay. Something like this. That's not what we want. So we draw in here a repeater. So we repeat the notes. A bit of sound design. So in here I bring in basically the first values to sound design what I want to have. I not kind of evolve my sound. I draw in static or I use static values to actually define the sound. And when I use these values or I yeah, dial in all these values for my sound, I already testing with some parameter changes here what I can do with this preset or with this patch, right? So that's why I'm playing around here with the cutoff. So I'm already scanning while I'm dialing in this preset. I'm already scanning for possible value changes over time what I can do with the automation over time to give this some, or this dispatch the sound some kind of life, some kind of storyline over time. So this this is why I'm fiddling around when you watch my streams, when I fiddle around and try out different settings here and see what I can get out of all these values are already dialed in. What can I do with this preset, with the sound? So right, this is too much here. This is too less. So in, so I'm kind of in this range here. I can play around with the, with the resonance. So this is too much. This is too, also too much. So in between here and here, this is the range I want to play in with this cutoff, right? So I'm scanning for all these possibilities I can use. This is why I'm playing around with all the knobs all the time to find to find the sweet spot for the sound itself, but also at the same time finding ranges I can play with later on with automation and maybe modulation. So then on top of that, uh, we get uh, modulation here with the modulation system in Bitwig. So I can use a random mod, right? You can say I want to randomly play around here with the cutoff so the sound is not that static anymore. So maybe switch this to hold here, also to note. So every time we trigger a note, we get a random value. 
So every time we trigger a node, we get a different setting for the cutoff knob. So right, I'm basically dialing in here a small range because I want just a small fluctuation in the cutoff. But I'm already thinking about automation at the same time. I'm thinking about, well, this small little range here, I'm modulating because it gives my sound in its current form a kind of a life of its own because it's changing all the time. But also I don't change the sound too much so it becomes a completely different sound. Um, this is something I keep myself for the automation. So I can draw in an automation later to yeah, change the sound more drastically. i show you this in a minute. But I want to give you basically a rough idea what I'm thinking when I'm dialing in automation or modulation uh, things to knobs and also changing or deciding what kind of ranges I'm using. So here I'm saying, well, this is my sound. I defined my sound. It's kind of this uh, dub tech chord uh, sound, plug sound. And then I used modulation to bring in some kind of small little fluctuations to the sound. So it sounds more alive or organic. And then I'm already knowing I'm using automation later on to make more drastic changes to progress the sound in a way over time, okay? So we can do the same. We can just duplicate here the render mod and I get a different seat here. So I'm modulating slightly just the decay time. And maybe I use random mod here and I don't use here the hold. I just modulate by smoothing all the way up. So it's a sinus curve, one bar modulation. And I'm slowly, also by volume, I'm slowly modulating here the pitch, just a tad. I don't use here the, the vibrato because the vibrato just uses internally an LFO that, has, that goes up and down. But I prefer to use the random mod here, which also gets me some kind of sinus, uh, sinus waveform, but it's randomly in what kind of values it chooses, right? So it's, um, it's kind of a random pitch mod. So I'm modulating here by, or maybe I go to bipolar, uh, unipolar here, and modulate by, let's say, 20, uh, 20 cents. So, um, so now I'm modulating here the pitch, decays, for filter and amplitude, and also your slightly, um, yeah, the cutoff, okay? Maybe I'm using unison. So this is way too busy, so I have too many nodes, so I'm using um, a quantizer. So everything that comes out of the repeats here is getting quantized to a 16 node grid. And now I can change the repeat setting here. until I find some kind of nice setting. So let's go for three. So now I define basically the pattern of this, um, of this clip. And I also at the same time, um, at the same time I'm thinking about automation again, because I can automate this here later on. I can say I want to change the repeat, uh, repeats timing and create a different pattern or maybe I can change up the pattern um, at a certain point. And I can show you in a minute also uh, how this sounds. So now we have this and we I bring in here maybe a delay or maybe lose, uh, use a convolution reverb here and I'm going for a spring, spring reverb. Um, let's try out something here. See, this is also something we can use later on in the automation here. Yeah? 
So I'm playing around with the patch, dialing in the sound, specifically how I want the sound. And then I also remember certain knobs I'm changing where I think mm, this could be really nice later on to automate to progress actually my track in a certain direction. Okay. So, um, so here we have this loop now. Okay, and you get the idea how this sounds pretty easily because it's always the same sound. Um, it plays the same pattern um, and uh, it has some slight changes in it here with the modulation to get some organic feel to the sound, which is okay. But now we have to progress it, right? So what we want to do now is to use automation for that. So let's say you make a longer pattern. We have this 8-bar pattern here and then we have here a second uh, so we have four bars, basically four bars. And here at the end of this bar, we want to draw in some kind of change, right? So what we can do now is use the automation, open this up and say, well, I want to use here my cutoff. So I just click on the cutoff and I get this new line here. You can see that's the current frequency. And before I progress and draw in some automation lines here, I want to say, for me, it's important actually that I define the sound first, then I add some automation to it here in the automation lane. And then in the end, when I'm pretty happy with my eight bar loop, how it sounds and how it progresses, how it's organically evolving in a small little, in small little amounts, in a localization, in a local uh, solar system, basically. Then later on, I move on to the arrangement to the automation and draw in the whole Milky Way, right? So the whole picture, the, the, the broad, the broad strokes, basically. So that's very important because when you draw in automation, um, you define how the, how this patch sounds like. It's pretty difficult to actually change the patch later on. So that's why I'm already doing this pretty late and I'm trying to, to, to draw on, to draw out basically how long I um, fiddle around with the knobs and find a sweet spot for the eight bar loop. And then when I'm settled with all those things and I'm happy how it sounds, then I move on to the automation, to the arrangement. So, so now we draw, so we pretty much do this here in a quick way. So it's just for the sake of this, this tutorial, this would be, you know, take much more time when I, Want to do this in a real track so here we are happy with the kick drum we are already happy with the with the sound of this chord so now we can move on to the arrangement phase so we remember the cutoff knob is really nice to use so we draw in here some automation i want to say at the end here from this from these four bars we draw in some slight little change something like this So then I can use here this this uh, mode. Um, actually, don't know how to change this here. Um, oh yeah, it's the it's the time time selection. If you press two on the keyboard, I always already press one or two to change between the two. So I'm using two here to get this you know this cursor, and then I can select just here the automation, and then just hit Control and D to duplicate this. And I get this right. So now we have just duplicated the. Yeah, this automation. So right, we have the same sound. Um, it's organically changing the sound organically with the modulation. But now with the automation, we bring in some kind of storyline. We introduce here basically the end of this of these four bars to go into the next uh, bunch of four bars, right? So we kind of define the arrangement when something happens without using uh, impacts or sweeps or your, you know, these, these, these typical noise, noise sweeps at the end. So we can do this easily here with just using automation and play around with your sounds over time. So now we have this here. 
So here we have basically a small change and here I want to introduce maybe a longer change. Why? Because now we have here completed basically an eight bar um, or, or eight, yeah, eight bars basically, which is kind of an, um, a number for club tracks where you want to change every eight bars something. So it's basically a whole uh, section, I want to call it, a, a whole section. And this is maybe my next stop from the draft. So when I do start the draft, I probably have here just, you know, two, two bars or four bars. Then I extend it to eight bars. And then I try to make as much as possible with automation in these eight bars before I advance to then 16 bars and so on, right? So here we have the small little cutoff, maybe a bit too much. Then here we open up much more and also over a longer amount of time. So now the listener has a feeling when the eight bars are moving to the next eight bar section, right? So you get the feel for this arrangement. You know when something happens, you introduce a kind of groove or rhythm with this automation uh, for the listener. So the listener knows when the drop comes in from the next eight bar loop or maybe the, the, the main drop right after the intro. You can also introduce this with, with automation, of course. So automation is pretty important to give the listener a sense of when something happens when the song progresses, you know, uh, when to expect something. So it's pretty important for that. So now we opened up here the cutoff. We can also um, now advance to more stuff. So uh, we have, for instance, here the this this knob here, right? Uh, which introduces basically the modulation from the filter envelope here to the cutoff. So this is also important. You can now just duplicate here this. And you can see I'm not extending here by drawing this out. I'm just duplicating this. And this is just for me. I use I do this all the time because now I can distinguish between you know these eight bar blocks. I know this is an eight bar block and I know this is an eight bar block. So now I can draw in basically here the envelope amount, envelope um, modulation amount. And when I click on this, I can see here, we are already here, plus 84. So we can maybe switch to 84 just to make this a round number. I kind of like this. Bring this in here and yeah, say the second bar here is at 84 and the first is maybe a bit more toned down, something like this. Maybe let's go for uh, 24. Just have a round number. So now we have basically a small little change. We have this eight bar loop where we have this tone down um, cut off here with a different envelope modulation. And here we have a, a second part where we have the envelope modulation way more open, right? So it changes the sound more drastically. So we have already the same sound with a bit of modulation on it and a bit of automation. We already made two versions, right? Of this main idea. So I don't make drastic changes, but I make, you know, certain changes at certain points with leech, which leads to this kind of arrangement and it, uh, gives you this impression that something progresses, that something happens in your track, right? And um, yeah, we can move on here. Yeah. We already have the convolution reverb here. So I remember that this one kind of sounds nice. So maybe we draw in that. So maybe we start here at the beginning to have this convolution all the way up. And we slowly get out of the reverb here over time.
and maybe at the end we bring it, we bring it, bring it back in. Ah, oh, the, re the delay sounds sounds very nice. So maybe we use the mix knob and draw this in and. Maybe bring this down here yeah. and just slowly fade this in. So we, so we have a lot of possibilities actually to make something with your sound, to progress the sound without even changing a pattern or bringing in a new sound or whatever. You just use the, use the automation and have some fun with all these parameters you remembered from the sound design stage um, that you can use now to bring in life, to breathe in some interesting things right over time and the more you do it the more you the more alive becomes your track and the more a sense of progression the listener gets right so maybe i bring this in you can see we have already drawn a lot of things smaller changes so we can see we have this basically here to to give the listener a kind of a hint that here something ended right we have one bar second bar then something happens one bar, second bar, something different happens. Oh no, the change is much more drastic. It, it sounds like there is now a main big section ending and the next big section is coming in, right? And we also have here now a drastic change with the convolution reverb. So this gives also this impression that something happened, right? A progression happened in the song structure and so on and so on. So you basically use automation for that, for the arrangement to get out of this eight bar loop, to have some fun with what you already dialed in, with your already set, kind of set um, sound and your already set uh, pattern with your sound, right? It's maybe too much here for the convolution, but you get the idea. So we can now duplicate this here because it's already a nice little small ecosystem of changes. You don't need to do, you know, you don't make it too complicated at the beginning. Just try, try out two or three settings and play around with the modulation and see if you come up with some interesting changes over time. And it makes, it makes it so easy for you later on, the more you do this, right? We already now can here um, kind of get away with this easy pattern over, I don't know, the course of one minute, just with automation to keep it interesting for the listener. Maybe not that much, but you know, you, you get it, you get away with it, basically. Um, so what we also can do now is we remembered here we have this repeat setting, right? So we can just click this and change the note repeats. Maybe we um, go back to three here. Yeah, let's 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 listen to listen go to the to the end here and increase. Right, this could be interesting. Maybe it's too much. You have to play around and find a nice little. Oh, that's too much. Let's go over there. So without changing any note, just drawing in here automation for the note repeat setting, you already get a nice little. Um, Pattern change at the end here to give the sense to the listener that now a big, big part of this whole chunk of eight bar um, loops is ending. And maybe here we introduce a new instrument. So let's duplicate this and bring in maybe some hi-hats. We use the E-hats here. Uh, let's close this here for a moment. We don't need to look at that all the time. So here we bring in some hi-hats, right? So we are pretty... Um, 
Maybe use the repeater for that. I'm I'm not sure. Um, yeah, let let's do your offbeat offbeat hat, and just draw this out. So we're dialing out the sound we want. Okay, this is also a nice trick I can show you. I'm using here a different velocity setting for the first hi-hat, right? And for the offbeat hi-hat, I'm just using this one. Or maybe here, a second one. Do this even lower. Yeah, let's, let's go for that. So you can see the velocity, right? So just a bit, just way less uh, velocity here, also way less near, much more velocity. So you get this nice groove. And on the hi-hat, e-hat device, we have this velocity setting, right? It increases the velocity sensitivity, which means um, it decides how loud the hi-hat sounds on different um, velocity settings, right? If I pull this all the way up, The sensitivity is here 60 dB. So um, that means the range between the lowest velocity setting and the highest velocity setting is 60 dB, which is a pretty wide range, right? So this means the quiet sounds or the low velocity sounds are much, much quieter. And the higher velocity settings here, uh, hi hats, are much, much louder. Okay. So you can use this to your advantage. So you can start here with this. The same pattern, which sounds like there's only one hi-hat because all the other hi-hats are in low velocity. And then you tr pull this down. Until you are at zero dB, which means all the hi-hat sounds are at the same loudness. And it sounds like, you know, a boring pattern. So you can use this to our advantage with modulation, of course. You can say we want to start here with a um, not so busy hi-hat pattern. And at the end here, we maybe introduce, well, let's actually go ahead for this. Um, let's introduce here a small little change to maybe 20 dB velocity range. Right, so we can do something like this. Maybe, maybe let's go for that. Maybe duplicate this, and then at the at the second two bars here, maybe we say we don't want to go back to sixty dB. We want to stay here, and then we even want to. Let's see. Yeah, we want to stay there, or maybe here. And then go even lower here. And maybe bring us down to you know, minus four dB, just in the background. Okay, so also here, hi-hat pattern, pretty easy, just some velocity things, and then we play around with the velocity setting and the automation, and you give the listener a sense that something progresses, that something happens, and something drastically changes. As you can see, when we close down here, basically, the hi-hat uh, automation lane, it looks like a normal, um, yeah, normal arrangement, but yeah, under the hood, a lot of stuff is actually going on, right? And we created all these automations. If you actually don't like to draw in this automation with the mouse, I highly recommend to use some of your MIDI controllers. I know a lot of you people have uh, automation, um, some MIDI controllers at home. 
laying around, nobody uses it, right? So you just use this MIDI controller, uh, right click here, say map controller to key or um, uh, map controller to, to controller or key. So you can map it to some kind of knob on your MIDI controller and then play around, just hit play. And you see the automation red, right? And then play around and groove with the track and just play around with these knobs and change settings over time and dial in the settings at certain points where you think it feels right. This is what I also do a lot. Um, because it also leads to different results. Um, but for me, I know exactly what I want to paint in. So I use the automation paint settings here, use my mouse. And it's also nice to ex explain things. But when you have a controller, use your controller. Uh, map three or five values, start to hit play, hit play, play around with these knobs, groove a lot alongside with the track, and you have basically all these automation automation uh, information painted in in no time. And ec probably at the, at the right positions. You don't need to be that precise, right? Completely forget about precision in music production. It's You want to have uh, well, let's say that in digital audio production, everything is already highly precise and you want to prevent that. You want to have an organic sound, probably, uh, because you get it digital, correct and precise easily in no time. But with these automations here, I'm very, very lousy and loosely uh, when, it, when it comes to how I paint it in or how I um, record stuff, right? Also with the MIDI keyboard, when I play in some um, <clears throat> some keys, some notes, I'm not that precise. I want to have it pretty roughly on the grid because I want to keep that organic feel. That's very important to me because uh, sounding digital and on the grid is boring, in my opinion, right? Uh, maybe a clap, huh? Also with the clap, you can paint in your easy pattern, right? Uh, let's say here. And just uh, duplicate this here. Draw in the original sound. So we have this and we take here delay one maybe or oh, let's let's take a delay plus let's take here soft and you already can hear it right so this is something you want to automate so maybe you start just slowly at the beginning with the bit of mix so we can hear the delay in the background and then we bring it in more at the end of the sequence let me duplicate this here or maybe let's go even lower than that and just duplicate this That's also something you could automate. Um, let's uh, use here the blur amount. And we want to dial down the blur here at this point. Um, duplicate this. So we basically remove uh, this whole diffusion thing. And maybe also at yeah, this position, we change the delay timing to one. Or maybe we go down in steps, two, and one. And here we go back to three. 
Okay. Wie geht das? Das could be uh, maybe interesting when we bring this a bit earlier here and let the reverb or the delay some time to evolve. And maybe feedback here, bring the feedback up. And to get this dubby feel. Okay, so um, let's duplicate this here like this. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, yeah, you can use the second second time marker and just mark multiple things here and just duplicate the shit, something like this, right? make it yeah it's pretty easy actually to, to do to come up with complex automation So um, here we probably also want to have some kind of ducking happening from the kick drum. So we can use here an audio side chain. Of course this kick drum is from my DFAM, it's just an audio sample. Uh, so we use the master kick output here, low rise, let's see, get to the modulation. Just a small little ducking. Maybe too much. So yeah, this is how you bring in movement in your arrangement. So, uh, so things change over time to give people an actually an idea of your arrangement. So when something happens, when when to expect something, right? But here you can see the patterns are basically the same, right? It's all the same pattern, all the same uh, blocks I'm using. It's just the automation that, that does the heavy work. And I not even, you know, used some noise sweeps or impacts. You can even use that additionally at the top, at the end, you know, bring in here maybe a crash, an impact sound or sweep here, a rever reverse sweep to even more emphasize that something progresses, that something changes, that a, a big part, a big chunk of your track is all finished and comes to the next to the next part, to the next section. Um, so you get this feel or you give this listener a feel of progression. So this is what I want to talk about today in this video to actually show you what you can use the automation for and how to use it. So you have a sense of what to use when. So to recap this, you dial in a sound, you create a sound, you scan while designing the sound, you scan for nice little knobs you can automate or you can um, automate or automate or modulate later on, right? Then you add some modulation to bring in life to the sound without changing it too drastically, basically. And then um, you create patterns um, you duplicate these patterns and then you use automation to draw in certain things to give the listener a feel of uh, progression. So that's that's how I use it. But this is not this is just a rule of thumb, right? It's uh, also possible that you change the sound drastically um, with automation already. Um, it's it depends on the sound you're going for, right? If you have like um, 
and let's say you make some that's that's what I see all the time on the internet when people do um let's go here when they do some kind of uh how it's psych psychedelic trance psychotrance psytrance that's the name sorry I do have this this kind of thing here and maybe draw in here oh what's it's actually in minor right so something like this and then you have here some vocal vocaloids and choose a random mode and choose your hold and note then you change the position of the wavetable drastically well it's actually only one note right yeah so, and then use a different one so you're already changing basically the sound drastically with the modulation so this is also possible of course um, then for the arrangement you probably have to do another trick where you have like one part playing this sound and then you go to a different part here in the, in the arrangement and say well I switch to a completely different sound maybe uh, use your different wavetable or I change uh, instead of the wavetable I'm changing the pitch or the pattern or the rhythm uh, whatever so you need to make drastic changes then in another way but usually um, when you do let's say tracks or club tracks where you don't have local drastic changes and you have slow changes over time then this is the best method of basically um, parting what to use what for so uh, patterns automation modulation and so on so yeah this is just some to give you a rough idea because i had this conversation with one of my students one of my patrons who uh, wanted to talk to me two hours on my on my coach plan on my coach here so we talked about this and i gave him some ideas and i thought maybe it's a nice uh, video to make for you guys so you also have an idea how to use automation how to use modulation and to actually get out of this uh, devilish eight bar loop um, that many people are stuck in okay so that's it for this video thanks for watching leave a like if you liked the video subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video and of course ask some questions in the comments if you have some questions about it or maybe you want to see more of certain things right let me know thanks for watching and bye